Hello, Michael here with another Renderman tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at some light filters in part one of this light filters tutorial series or very short series. Um, so light filters, basically what they are is um, sometimes known as gobo, sometimes known as blockers, uh, sometimes known as gels that are put on top of lights to create different light uh, color effects. Um, or stencils to create different shape effects um, and essentially what you use them for is to control exactly how your light is working in the scene its shape um, and some of its properties so today we're going to be looking at the barn light filter and the Pixar cookie light filter you'll notice also that there is the Pixar Gobo light filter. It has the same icon as the cookie. It's basically the same filter, um, except the cookie's a little bit more, has got a few more features. So uh, that's why I'm gonna go over the cookie light rather than go over the Gobo light and repeat myself. But first let's have a look at the barn light filter. So before we begin, what you're gonna need to do is create a project and create a new scene and set your scene to the project. Otherwise this will not work. Um, RenderMan needs a place to write texture files to and things like that for uh, for light filters So you'll need to make sure you do that before you get started Secondly, you'll need to create a light in the scene like I already have done here. You can see it there I've also created some geometry I've just got a plane on the ground and a sphere that's intersecting it just so we can see some of the effects on the right hand side here You can already see what the render would look like without any filters on it and uh, let's go ahead and add a barn light filter to our light. So with our light selected, let's go up to the RenderMan shelf, right click on that and click barn light filter. And you will have something like this happen. So essentially what a barn light filter is, it's uh, if you imagine a square around a light and each side has a flap which can be opened and closed. This is used in a studio environment normally uh, to control the reflection of light. Uh, so you can stop light being bounced into areas of a set that you don't necessarily want uh, So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our attribute editor after you've selected your Pixar barn light And you'll see the first thing uh, the first option that you have is Barn mode can either be physical or analytic um, personally. I find with uh, barn mode that um, analytic can be a little bit more easy to control sometimes uh, physical is recommended to get physically accurate um, renders of what the a physical barn uh, blocker would do in a scene. So if I render now, you'll see that nothing's changed. If I grab the barn filter though and I start to move it down, because it's moving further away from the light, it's causing uh, the projection to be shrunk because essentially the relative to the light, the port in which the light is being shot through is smaller just because of the distance. Similar to when you have, say, for instance, a small light um, relative to a large object, it will create a sharper shadow than when you would have a larger light um, relative to the same object. So the lines coming out of the barn light are essentially where the light is going to hit. So it's creating a sort of a perimeter in which the light is just as a visualizer. So as if I as I move that down, you'll see that it's starting to shrink the area in which the light is affecting. And as I raise it up, you can see it's doing the inverse. Uh, so our first options are barn shape. We can change the width um, by reducing the width or increasing it. And the same with height, pretty straightforward. Radius is how you would uh, essentially control your fall off. Um, what it's doing is it's closing the distance of the barn doors from the perimeter of the the mountain which they're on if you're sort of thinking in a simulation sense so as you can see as it sort of um, they close it's sort of sharpening it and as you open it up you'll get a lot smoother fall off um, edge controls the thickness of the outer part of your barn so uh, if I change it to 0.1 you can sort of start to see it change as I go up incrementally So you can see that fall off area is increasing as you do that you could combine that with radius to get some uh, even more control as well so if you're looking for quite a smooth transition then uh, working those two numbers together you'll be able to do so um, and the next option is pre barn this is the effect that uh, is applied to your light uh, before it reaches the barn. So um, you can either have no effect cone or no light. Generally, you're going to have it set to no light though. Scale width and height is going to change the width and height of your um, overall structure. 
uh, this is sometimes uh, this is generally better and more recommended to do than actually using transforms on the light itself so uh, on the barn itself so I can do a, a similar thing like so but then you're going to get double transformations as you sort of work in here at the same time so I would do all your transformations within the attribute editor itself in refine shape we can refine the shape further this is um, sort of what I talked about earlier with um, opening and closing barn doors so you can see now I'm opening the left door I can open the right door as well which is the far side and you can see the power in this sort of thing as to how it creates um, a way in which you can get some rather dramatic lighting while controlling the way the, way the light is bouncing around the scene uh, multiply it so with density it's essentially the you can think of it as uh, the presence control for the uh, the presence or opacity control for the barn itself so as the density is decreased the lights able to pass through the barn doors and as, as you go down to zero obviously it's going to become totally transparent invert will invert what the barn door does so you'll see quite obviously now that the um, light is being shot at all at all the areas around the barn door and the barn door the barn is essentially acting as a blocker at this point intensity is a global control for your diffuse and your specular contribution so if you want to multiply both of those um, you can do so by just increasing that um, also a good way of getting some extra light through it in a pinch if you want to however you will notice that the light is now filtering outside of our barn doors and finally we have uh, the combine mode this is when you're combining different filters so I won't be able to show this here because I don't have another filter in the scene but essentially it works the same as uh, Photoshop filters so you've got multiply you've got screen you got min and max as well um, if you want the colors so if you've got a red one and a blue one you want to multiply them by each other you can get the expected result that way finally while we're on the barn light I will just show you some other things so like I said before on physical mode as you adjust the uh, height of the light relative to the barn or the the distance of the barn relative to the light you can expect these sorts of results this will also be um, true of the angle of the light so you can see as I turn the angle of the light it's shifting that way this side's going to be sharper because it's uh, because of the angle relative to the light and the side's going to be um, have more fall off and then you can combine that with getting it closer or further away etc etc so the barn light pretty cool especially when you combine it with uh, things such as uh, volumes um, so chuck it in a foggy scene you can get some really nice god rays and that sort of thing with it I'll probably do a tutorial in the future on how to do that sort of thing as well next we're going to add a, a Pixar cookie light filter to it so select your light and click Pixar cookie light and you'll see that a similar thing happens so once again there's two modes for cookie mode you can be physical or you can be analytic I'm going to start off analytic here because I think it's a little bit easier to control with this particular one so you notice in analytic mode that um, as you raise and lower the uh, the light filter it doesn't splay out like it does with the barn however if we change to physical mode the opposite would be true and that's because the light is being projected through a physical object rather than parameters being set in the attribute editor which is why I think um, analytic for this particular um, light filter can be a little bit easier to control so the cookie light filter you'd use for projecting uh, images or colors um, or shapes for that matter onto surfaces so uh, if you imagine like if they still have them in schools I don't know but um, overhead transparencies where they you know teachers would put um, writing and project it on a board or just a regular projector for that matter um, that's the sort of effect that you could achieve here so at the moment it's got the rat grid texture um, in there by default I'm gonna leave that in there for now I'll change it in a little bit and when I do that I'll show you what the difference uh, in fill color does at the moment it won't make a difference um, you can change the map width and height that's just going to change the u and the v value essentially of the map in multiply we've got density essentially that's going to make it uh, more transparent uh, and then more opaque the more you increase it and then if you go above one it works as a multiplier 
the intensity diffuse and specular controls are the same as they were on the barn filter so i'm not going to go over that again um, but i will mention invert if you invert it it will invert the colors of your map so you can see that we're getting the opposite colors if we look at blue on a color wheel for instance the opposite is going to be sort of yellow and or yellowy orange so when we invert that you can see that the blue colors are going yellowy so the directional button determines whether or not your image is being projected orthographically so when you've got it on um, it's projected orthographically from the source and you won't be able to sort of control the way it is being projected um, however if you've got uh, directional off you can adjust the apex which is the distance between the center of the the center of the cookie and the center of projection so as you increase that you're going to see that our image becomes smaller because it's getting further away and then as you decrease it it's going to get larger because it's closer you can see the shape changes as well so essentially what's happening is the light is closer now to our cookie there and it's further away when it is like that if you enable use light direction it is going to use the direction of the light to project your map um, otherwise it will only follow the orientation of your cookie uh, so that we can control with shear so as you push the shear and the X you can see it's been pushed in that direction and the same goes as we go in that direction so you can see how that's changing the way that that's mapping now to our object in the scene uh, texture mapping is the way that the texture is mapped to our cookie um, I've noticed that no repeat and tile actually work the same on this texture I'm not sure if that's a bug or not um, edge extent however is um, a little bit easier to show so essentially it's extending the edge of our texture to the um, edge of the where, the where you can see the cookie so to make that more obvious if I change the apex so our texture is essentially this grid here in a square and then the edges um, are being stretched out to the perimeter of our cookie invert u and v is just going to invert the uh, texture on the u and the v axis scale u and v is going to scale the texture on the u and the v axis so you can see it stretch there and offset is going to slide the texture on the u and the v so if you need to make some fine adjustments these tools are quite useful next we've got blur this is where i'd actually recommend that you start using physical if you're wanting to get blur effect and the same goes for density fall off i find them a little bit too difficult to control if you're looking for some very specific controls i get into this but otherwise i'd recommend going to physical now to show the blurring effect of the physical mode um, i've just made the sphere not visible uh, for the moment so as the cookie itself becomes closer to our light source you can see that obviously the projection is becoming larger but um, also it's becoming more blurry and then as it becomes cl closer to the plane in which it's being projected on uh, you can see it become sharper however the image itself is becoming smaller and you can offset this with the scale of the u and the v so we could say maybe about that 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and then you can see that's becoming a lot sharper to get this completely in focus I'd have to pretty much have it on the surface itself um, and generally if you're doing that you'd pretty much want to have it in um, analytic and then that way you can quite easily have it in focus uh, so back into analytic mode finally we just have a look at saturation contrast and tint so saturation is pretty straightforward reduce it to make it less saturated increase it to make it more saturated go above to to make it uh, go make it go above one to make it even more saturated midpoint works with uh, contrast so if the contrast is above or below 1.0 you'll be able to use the midpoint to adjust the contrast which is just the midpoint uh, between its zero and one value based on the contrast and then inversely if i change that to two and increase the midpoint you can see a lot more contrast and white point is also controlled um, in conjunction with contrast so as you lower the white point the light the white point is going to become closer to black as you can see and finally we've got tint it's just if you want to tint your overall map any particular color and like I mentioned before combined mode is when you're combining your filter with other filters uh, so that's it for this tutorial um, next time we're checking in we will be having a look 
uh, the multi light filter, the ramp, um, the rod light filter as well. Uh, the rod light filter is the same as your Pixar blocker, but it's slightly more advanced. So I'll be looking at those three next time. So uh, stay tuned for those tutorials. They'll be coming out later in the week. If you've liked this tutorial, then make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. Uh, leave me a comment if you've got any questions. Sorry, I had to breeze through this one. It was a pretty long tutorial as it was. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I'm putting out a couple of CG tutorials per week. If you want to follow those and stay up to date, make sure you are doing so on the Facebook page as well. Link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.